So imagine like when they had Michael Jackson and Bugs Bunny, they just did like Richard Nixon Michael Jackson. <laughs> Welcome, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where if you can't slam with the best, well, yeah, that's what you're doing here. Although today, uh, maybe not so much. Uh, I am your host, Matt Prisons, joined as always by my Slam Jam co host. Hello, my name is Michael Jordan. Is that one okay? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That one works. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we were joined by by uh, everyone. Everyone is here. It's here's the thing. Um, Mitzi's the frog. Hey, what's up? <laughs> that's me. I'm, I'm I have transmogrified myself into my true form. Um, that's perfect. Like Peyton was my friend. Like you guys don't actually you, you hadn't met Peyton before he was on here. Otherwise, we have all of the Hall of Victories guests. And also Stuart, who has not been on an episode. What's up? <laughs> Perfect. Stuart has transmogrified himself into a hand. Yes. Um. And <laughs> wait, I like that. Can we switch places? Like you sit next to Matt, and I'll be the hand. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um. Today, for our very special live action twenty fifth episode, uh, we've kind of broken our own rules to talk about two films that are not. Horribly received. Um, in fact, both are, both are like fairly nostalgic. I think for a lot of people, it's uh, Space Jam versus Looney Tunes back in action. Nostalgia correct didn't like Space Jam, so it must be bad. <laughs> I <laughs> we're, my memory of that is like I remember Rob in like. Some video was talking about how like how hyped everyone was to go see Space Jam, and then after he saw it, like his friends were like, "Oh, did you see it? Oh, how good was it?" And he was like, "It was fine." <laughs> um, I loved Space Jam as a kid. I saw back in action probably when I was in high school. Like I, I liked it, but I probably would have liked it a lot more if I saw it when I was younger. Oh yeah, I loved back in action when I was a kid a lot more than Space Jam. I kind of didn't like Space Jam as a kid. Um, I had I had like a poster for Back in Action up in my uh, my closet, and I had like a little I, I had a stuffed Bugs from the movie, and I had the the spy car from the movie. I had a toy of that, which you can see in uh, one of my old Burninator videos. It is in there. <laughs> um, hate Space Jam too. <laughs> That's not even a, we're not going to talk about Space Jam. Too. We'll leave it there. Uh, I just want to say it. <laughs> uh, Michael, would you like to introduce Space Jam? Yeah, normally I have, like, notes ready, and like I said, the director in the year came out. I, I'm not going to be able to... Uh, what year did it come out? Uh, 96. All right, 96, directed by Hula, and... Joe Pitka. Joe Pitka. Pitka? I don't know how yeah. to pronounce that. Normally I'm, like, on my computer, and I can do research as I'm speaking. Um... It's a movie about, based on a commercial for Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny selling, what was it, Nike sneakers? Uh, Probably. Yeah. And, um, you know, they were charming little commercials, and making a movie out of it is a ridiculous enough idea to be interested. The Looney Tunes are, there's this planet of aliens, um, where their entire planet is a theme park um, that advertises it as being run by morons. And then Danny DeVito alien is really concerned that this one kid doesn't seem to be having a good time. So he wants to abduct the Looney Tunes so the park will now be uber awesome. And then they, uh, so they go down to abduct the Looney Tunes. Um, and they're able to do it because they have a laser beam. But then the Looney Tunes like challenge them to a game of basketball for their freedom, which they accept. But they take the powers from many popular basketball players at the time, like Charles Barkley. Um, that's actually a really funny scene of the movie of them like trying to figure out why they don't have their ability to play basketball anymore. That's like un- un- unironically, I think that part's funny. Um, but um, so Looney Tunes abduct Michael Jordan so, since he's really good at basketball, so they actually stand a chance against these aliens now. And then like the first half of the movie is just setting that up in a little bit of train, and then the second half it's the fucking game. They spend yeah. a lot of time on the climatic game, but the movie is short enough to where. The game never gets boring, I don't feel. I feel like it's like, okay, everything was set up in an appropriate amount of time, and now you get half of the half of the movie is like what it should be. Yeah, it felt really short. I was, I was kind of surprised it was 88 minutes. I, it felt a little shorter than that. Um, I was also surprised at like how quickly they get to the basketball game, because there is like 
a decent amount of build up to that, but uh, and the scenes leading up to it are fun too, just because you have you got fucking Newman in there, you've got <laughs> you know a fair number of scenes with the Looney Tune, like I mean a decent amount of them before that, but like even the freaking stuff with Michael Jordan is just funny because it's like they incorporated his actual baseball career as part of the story. Yeah, that's so wild. That that's so <laughs> that was a real thing. That was not just something they made up for this movie. <laughs> um. I enjoy this movie. It's bad. It's stupid. Um, it's like, but it's there's nothing else like it. I think it's like when people refer okay. to like the most as '90s as you can go. Space Jam's like one of the most '90s things ever created. Oh, yeah. And then just to compliment on a few things, like I mean, completely unironically, again I mentioned the scene with the basketball players trying to figure out why they don't have their abilities anymore. Like I think it goes on a perfect amount of time, and I think it's genuinely funny. Um, Looney Tunes humor doesn't really, like, I don't think they're very funny in this, but it's, it kind of just feels like it's mimicking Looney Tunes, like, oh, can you remember this bit, um, Bugs Bunny describing himself and then saying never heard of him, like, it's just, like, copy and paste in jokes that you're familiar with, but, um, but it's fine, you know, but then, um, like, the animation's done really well, like, it's very solid animation and the soundtrack fucking kicks. Oh, the soundtrack's great. <laughs> um... I, a lot of these basketball players feel a little more invested than Michael Jordan does. Michael Jordan is kind of like, all right, guys, let's do some drills. Well, it's, yeah, they got to be funny. Michael Jordan was supposed to look cool, I guess, <laughs> except occasionally, like, oh, my God, they do some uncanny stuff with Michael Jordan. I feel like those are his times to shine as for comedy is when they're, like, disfiguring his body. <laughs> um, he looks terrifying in those shots. They turn him into a basketball. It's horrifying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, this movie's, like, really entertaining. It's it's real high energy, and it's so bizarre. Like, it's, it's like... Mm, like hmm. I said, just there's nothing else out there like it. No. It, and, and it's, like, so very 90s. I mean, even down to it being about basketball, like... Basketball just became, like, a big thing in the 90s, in part because of people like Michael Jordan and, like, the other basketball players that appear in this. Larry Bird, um, Scottie Pippen, uh, uh, Charles Barkley. We've got quite a few comebacks in this movie. We'll oh, yeah, we do. We'll talk about them, but... Um, <laughs> um, does anyone in the peanut gallery want to <laughs> chime in on their thoughts? I don't know. Wasn't it Jordan's... That they're advertising? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, why wouldn't it be Jordan? <laughs> I don't remember. That's literally his shoes. Jordan. Um, I don't know a lot about shoes. I have a question, more than a comment. Sure. Who do you think is hotter, Lola Bunny or Bugs and Drag? Um, hmm. I guess it depends on the on the drag and, and which version of Lola. Don't you fucking touch me. Lola. <laughs> I like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> Lola is <laughs> like... <laughs> She's a weird addition to the movie, because, like, obviously it's this, like, oh, there's not that many girl Looney Tunes. We gotta throw in a girl Looney Tune for the girls. Stork's ready to say something. The hand came back out. Sure, Stuart, what do you want to say? You guys saw my reaction. Yeah. <laughs> you guys saw me. When Lola Bunny first first came on, I, 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 like, was on this edge of my seat, just paying attention, like, it's her. <laughs> so Stuart likes Lola Bunny. And then when she left, I was like, all right. Back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's, who cares? It's another <laughs> thing that like makes it feel like a, a product of its time. Oh yeah. Sure. Um, no, I I I appreciate I appreciate um the Looney Tunes show for like doing something with Lola. I like right. her so much more in that show. That was like a way um, better way to like redo Lola than fucking. Because she's actually Jam funny. Too. Yeah, in Space Jam Two, I think it's worse than this one. <laughs> She she does nothing. Her and Bugs' relationship is like Bugs <laughs> calls her doll. She gets upset. Uh, or then, why? Then he pushes her out of the way when she's about to get squished by an alien. And uh, after that, they're just together. What a great arc! Yeah. Great romance between these two. Yeah, like um. Yeah, I, and Lola, I think, is one of the things about this film that, like, unambiguously sucks. Um, <laughs> although, <laughs> we talked about, like, 
did this movie awaken so many fetishes in our generation? Because <laughs> you've got Lola in there. Getting, the, the, you, you know why everyone's a fucking furry today? Lola Bunny. She's not even on the cover. No. <laughs> she on the back, she's not even on the back cover. Um, and there's like inflation stuff in this. And there's a lot of like ass shots in this. Stewart is giving his approval. He's into yeah. the inflation. Um, and the ass shots, presumably. Uh, God damn, what else about this movie? Uh, there's I, another I, one, the, I feel. I mean, is, flat, is the opposite of inflation one, like, flattening them? Because they do that, too. Is, maybe. I don't know. Pro- I mean, probably that's someone's fetish. You say, like, anything, it's like, okay, that's someone's fetish. It's weird. Um, the basketball game, it's, like, it's well-paced, it's, like, entertaining, but, like, the first half, the Looney Tunes are just getting creamed, and then Bugs is like, oh, uh, Michael's special sauce, uh, and then, and then they just decide to cheat. Yeah. (laughs) And then they're winning because they decided to cheat. That's just funny. They do, like, all sorts of weird Looney Tunes stuff. That is a very Looney Tunes, like, morality decision to come to. (laughs) Oh, that's just fucking cheat. Yeah. Yeah, but it's weird that, like, they threw in this thing about, like, ooh, we gotta get roided up on water, um, to, to, (laughs) to be good. And then, like, that, being stronger makes them go, oh, well, maybe we should, like, do Looney Tunes stuff. Maybe we should reference Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I didn't mind, like, that, that's something that, like, the fucking sequel would have done, but I feel like it's just done so quickly, and it's a funny, like, I drew it in a way where it was a funny visual, to where I was okay with it. The fucking Pulp Fiction. Then it's, a, it's a lot better than the Matrix shit, the sequel I, pulled. <laughs> the, the, the sequel would just have, like, the actual characters from Pulp Fiction show up. Yeah. But it's, like, it's not even, like, Sam Jackson and, and uh... John Travolta to just be like two random extras in the background dressed like them. I bet, I bet you honestly, who owns that movie? Because yeah, maybe. Uh, I think that's I think that's uh, New that Line. One? I think that's New Line. Maybe. Um, Warner Brothers doesn't own it, so that's why they wouldn't be in that one. I love how we had that like conversation we did like three minutes ago with my dad upstairs, definitely able to hear everything we're talking about. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> um, fucking, uh, uh, god damn it, you made me lose my train of thought. I was about to say something else about <laughs> the 90s, about how 90s this movie is. Pulp Fiction is exactly. like a very 90s reference. The soundtrack is also very 90s, but it's so good. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> the main, just the main theme. Oh, what's that? I was just saying, come on, Slam, and welcome to the jam is definitely the most 90s sentence. It's such a... It's happened. It's, like, it's so fucking catchy. Um, <laughs> oh, I was, I was going to talk about the sequel a little, because, like, I honestly didn't think they were ever going to make Space Jam 2, because they kept they kept saying they were going to do it. They kept like, ooh, Space Jam 2's going to happen. It's in production. Too, yeah. And then... I mean, Back in Action was supposed to be a sequel to Space Jam, and then Joe Dante got a hold of it, and he's like, no, no, we are not doing Space Jam. Um, <laughs> you know but, what? He was right. Although, uh, apparently at some point, it was like Spy Jam with Jackie Chan, and I feel like a lot of Spy Jam got put into the plot of Back in Action. Probably. I um, watch that. I mean, good. Back in Action is a spy movie. Like, yeah. Kind of. I... Here's the thing, I, a, I would watch a sequel to Space Jam in the early 2000s, right? When Space Jam was fresh. Like, at this point, it's like, no, fuck off. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, there's been too much time for people to think about what they saw. <laughs> Space Jam 2 should have had Shaq. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we, we talk about, like, like... <laughs> We talk about uh, them incorporating Michael Jordan's, like, real-life baseball career into this. I have heard people say they were, like, building up to Kobe going back to... Oh, wait, no, not Kobe. Fuck. Who's in the sequel? LeBron? LeBron. Yeah. LeBron going back to, like, his old team, and then he just didn't in real life, so they <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> um, uh, you want to talk about the cast in this movie? 
Because there's a lot of celebrities playing themselves. And not just basketball players. Like, you, you got Michael Jordan, you got Larry Bird, you got Charles Barkley. We got the grand return of... Why can't I think of his name right Bill now? Murray. Bill Murray, yeah. Bill Murray returns as himself. So we all know the the true sequel to Space Jam is Zombieland. Yeah. <laughs> um, previously appeared on Garfield. Also, Danny DeVito plays the uh, the evil alien in this. He was previously in My Little Pony. I got a list of other returning the, actors. He was like the slime thing, right? Uh, no, he was. He's oh, like the troll guys. Right, the troll guy. Who, who they're just like, oh, you can live in, like, our old castle. We're going to live in this house now. <laughs> the more marketable house. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Dan Castellaneta has, like, a brief appearance. He also made, like, a brief appearance in Cat in the Hat. Was he in Rhapsody Street Kids? He was not. There, the Lisa's voice actor was. No, no, Bart's voice Bart's actor. Bart's was. Yeah, that's what Bart's was. was. And she was also in My Little Pony. Oh, yeah. Um... Then there's the one that you mentioned who was uncredited. Well, oh, hold on. We got we got Steve Keela, who also appeared in The Grinch, playing very minor roles in both of these. I don't even know who he was in either of these. But then we've got Frank Welker and Dee Bradley Baker, uh, who both have previously just done, like, animal noises. Uh, Frank Welker did, like, animal noises for um, uh, The Grinch and Cat in the Hat. And D. Bradley Baker was in Mars Attacks, and he did the voice for Appa in um, Last Airbender. Well, Appa, what was the other one? Because Mars Attacks was not one we covered. No, uh, it's Mars Needs Moms. Did I say Mars Attacks? You did. I might have said Mars <laughs> Needs Moms. Uh, and they're, they're finally credited in this movie. They're finally actually playing characters in this movie. Um, I almost feel like we have to stop doing like repeat appearances. <laughs> But oh, like yeah, you gotta yeah, do like yeah. three or four we're times. Gonna, we're gonna hit a point where the episodes are extended by an hour <laughs> because we have to. Okay, this person showed up again. This person showed up again. I I I I'm, I'm calling it here. Like unless unless it's like a major actor, unless they are like or, the star of the movie. What's the guy's name? Um, who is like the king right now? Clint Howard is. We the, have to the mention anytime, champ. anytime Clint Howard shows up or if someone dethrones him. Um, and. Oh, yeah, it, it, any, anytime you get more than two, we'll we'll we'll, we'll mention more than double appearances. We also uh, Billy West and Bob Bergen are in both of these movies, both Space Jam and Looney Tunes Back in Action. Yeah, I um, mentioned Billy West showing up quite a few more times. It's just like what like talented voice actors join bad projects all the time. Like it's just how, it's just the way it is. You no, can take, I, take no, it's just the way it is. I mean, yeah. Right, this weekend we're going to too many games, that's why we're together, and uh, Cam Clark's going to be in there. Cam Clark was in the original Ninja Turtles. He's also in a lot of garbage. Is there anyone who we've covered who's going to be there? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'd have to double check. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? (laughs) I'd have to double check. Um... Let's talk about Billy West as Bugs Bunny. Because he's Bugs Bunny in this. He's not Bugs Bunny in Back in Action. Uh, I don't think he's very good as Bugs Bunny. I think the voice is fine. I just don't think that, like, Bugs is, like, really... I don't know. Like, there's, like, er- different eras of the character. And I don't think he was, like, funny in the 2000s. It felt like they were almost trying to make him kind of, like, a bit of a smart ass still. Like, he could have goofy expressions here and there. But it, like, I almost felt like they were trying to make him cool. Like he's the cool yeah, he's, one. He's he's too he's too laid in both of these movies, in both this and back in action. He's too laid back. He's too yeah. cool. He's not doing like the big wild overreaction well, he's, stuff. He's a fucking lunatic in the old ones, and that was funny. Like he was still the good luck character most of the time. Like Daffy's the one who's gonna get hurt. He's the one who's gonna get out of it. But yeah, but like he was a fucking nut job. And I mean the show, and the, even then, the old shorts were not like against making something bad happen to bugs. Like oh yeah, um. D. Bradley Baker does Daffy in this, and I don't think he's very good either. I think Bugs and Daffy both sound off in this movie. Uh, I wasn't bothered by the voices, I'll say that much. It was more so just the way they were written. Yeah. Uh, they, they just do, like, the most random stuff, just, out, like, out of nowhere. Like, when, when Daffy just, like, holds up his ass to show the Warner Brothers logo and then kisses it. It's like... We all laugh out of that. Where, the joke is that they own his ass. 
It felt like a somewhat self-aware joke. I don't know. Spit shine joke. Like that was it's, it's, weird. It's kind of funny that they clean up the gym that much that fast, but like the fact that they're just spitting everywhere. It's like this isn't Looney Tunes. It's not what the Looney Tunes do. Right. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like this movie doesn't really like capture Looney Tunes that well. It feels more like it's nodding at it a little bit. Like that's what makes it so bizarre. Is it's like. I mean, it's, it's kind of a weird thing to do with them in the first place, so it's like, I, I'm not surprised that they don't really act like themselves 100% in this. Uh, it feels like it's aware of Looney Tunes. It doesn't feel like it's being done by the people who ever worked on Looney Tunes in the past, yeah, you know? I, I mean, we're, we're going to talk in a second about a movie that got made specifically because Chuck Jones hated this movie. <laughs> What else goes on in this movie? I mean, I like Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito is good. Worth worth noting. Good good performance. Bill Murray, like the the one joke he does is that he wants to be a professional basketball player, and then and then he he plays one game and helps them, and then <laughs> yeah, retires. Yeah, I guess that's it. Like he's um, just like. <laughs> It, it, it's kind of like a set. The setup is like, oh, Bill Murray wants to be play basketball, but he's clearly just full of himself. He's in his own head. But then the punchline is at the end of the movie, he joins the team. Like, whatever, it's fine. It's a little. It, it would be. I think it'd be less funny if it was someone other than Bill Murray. Like, I think Bill, it being Bill Murray is part of the humor. I so love the Demeter's character. like, I didn't know Dan Aykroyd was in this picture. <laughs> um, like, good joke. One good joke there. Um. We could, we could talk about, like, I didn't actually pull it up. I've seen it before. Someone did, like, a breakdown of the points scored in this game. Like, 100% of the Monstars points come from Slam Dunks. And, like, <laughs> most of the Looney Tunes points are also from Dunks. <laughs> it's the best thing to animate, I guess, right? Yeah. Like, J- Jordan will do, like, some real basketball moves, and then the Looney Tunes is like, nope, dunk, 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 dunk. 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 <laughs> Uh, what, uh, anything else about Space Jam? I like it. It's like, it's not good, but I like it. It's, it's insane. I, I liked it when I was younger. I like it now. Yeah, and I mean, I think part of it is like, it's, it's so weird and strange, but it's also like kind of nostalgic. Like it's something we all watched as a kid and we were like, yo, what was up with that? Like Michael Jordan Looney Tunes movie. And, 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 yeah. And again, like. With stuff like the animation quality and the soundtrack, it's like, okay, yeah, it's not, it, this wasn't, like, a completely loveless project where, like, I, I know I know, Space Jam 2 is not the movie in question today, but, like, in comparison to that, I find it very hard to believe that there was much passion at all put into that. The real loser today is Space Jam 2. Like, whoever wins this one, the loser is Space Jam 2. Space Jam 2 gets last place. Um, I like the Chippendale movie better than it. <laughs> like, it's just... Um, oh, man. Woof. Would you like to move on to, to Looney Tunes Back in Action? Yeah, tell us about it. Okay, about so it, uh, Looney Tunes Back in Action is a film released in 2002? Someone look up when I'm Looney Tunes it. Back in Action came out. Uh, it was directed by Joe Dante. Who, of course, made the greatest film of all time, Gremlins 2. Um, right. And it, he made it specifically because, like, he... This was 2003. 2003. He was, like, a big Looney Tunes fan. And he, he like, he became friends with Chuck Jones later in life just because, like... like because of his love of the Looney Tunes and because he references the Looney Tunes in a lot of stuff he did. Uh, Bugs and Daffy... Or, yeah, Bugs and Daffy both appear in Gremlins 2. Um, but... First of all, sleep, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Uh, so he and Chuck Jones both hated Space Jam. And so when, when he found out the studio wanted to do another Looney Tunes movie, he, like, really tried to get on it just to, like, keep them from making another Space Jam. So in a lot of ways, it is the more respectful to the Looney Tunes. Uh, in the film... Daffy is, like, sick of playing second banana to Bugs, and he he ends up getting himself fired, 
Uh, same day, um, one Mr. Brendan Fraser, Os- oh, Academy Award winner, Brendan Fraser plays a security guard uh, who also gets fired. And then uh, the the lady who fired them is like, oh, we got to get Daffy back. But at this point, Daffy and Brendan Fraser have gone on this crazy spy expedition because it turns out Brendan Fraser's father, played by Timothy Dalton, who was James Bond, is he's like in all these spy movies and he was actually a spy the whole time. What a twist. And so, and now he's captured, and Brendan Fraser and Daffy have to go, uh, you know, uh, rescue him and then get this, like, blue monkey diamond that uh, they're trying to keep out of the hands of the Acme Corporation, run by one Mr. Steve Martin. Um, and so, so they're going after the diamond, and Bugs and this lady are going after them. And the Acme guy is trying to stop them, and in doing so, he calls all these classic villains from the Looney Tunes. Um, and then so, you know, it's basically go to a place, interact with an old Looney Tune, go to another place, interact with another Looney Tune, and it's interesting. It's it's a fun movie. I, I Before you say what you think of it, I think this is probably the best movie we've watched for the show. Really? In terms of, like, Okay, this movie got the most intentional laughs out of me, out of anything we've watched. Now, I've laughed harder at stuff, but it was never on purpose. They never wanted me to laugh at them. This movie got more genuine laughs out of me. You might be right, because the animation is good in this one, too. Um, And, like, the sequences are, like, shot a little better than a lot of the stuff we've watched. And it's, like... It feels like it understands itself pretty well. It doesn't take itself seriously at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you might be right. I don't... It's definitely I, not my... It's, you know, it's probably in my top ten, but it's not... I might not even have it in my top it ten. Be, it might be right at number eleven. I, ranked, I did rank these. Um, um, it was enjoyable. I liked it. But yeah. it's like, it's definitely a, okay... That was my one time watching it again. <laughs> I'm not putting this on again. Uh, yeah, you uh, probably... I, it is a real mixed bag, I think, because, um, like, a lot of the jokes, like, like there there are plenty of, like I said, this this got more genuine laughs out of me than anything we've watched. There are also a lot of jokes that do not land. They, they, they absolutely fumble the landing on a lot of these. I don't like Bugs. Bugs does not work. <laughs> just more, uh, same thing as Space Jam. He's, like, kind of just, I, he's too laid back. I think you put it best. I almost like him less in this movie. I think the voice is better. Not by much, but I think the voice is better. They, at least in Space Jam, have Bugs losing his cool multiple times. Like, yeah. See, like, when he, like, for, just like when he first, like, meets Michael Jordan, he screams, we need your help, and his voice, like, breaks, kind of like it did in the old stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, I appreciate that. Um, there's, you know, scenes of him getting cru- nearly crushed to death, like, and then he has, like, a really goofy expression when <laughs> when the big guy gets off of him, you know, it's like... Where this one, I'm failing to remember a single time they really let Bugs do anything other than make a snarky remark. Yeah, and like, a lot of them aren't good. Like, they the, they show up at Area 52, and it's like, haha, Area 52, and then he has to do this sarcastic, it's like, oh, Area 52, and then it's the old screwball gag, and it's like, that is not an appropriate place for that gag. Yeah. That was a very poorly placed gag. I think, I agree with you on that. I think all the other characters from Looney Tunes, I think they are better portrayed than this. Absolutely. Every every single other Looney Tune, I think, is much better in this movie. Like, Daffy's definitely the focus, and Daffy's definitely the one who was, like, allowed to be funny. Bugs had to be the... Sh- I don't even know if Bugs... He's not the straight man in the group. <laughs> um, it's just there to snark, make snarky remarks. Yeah, like, it, it was an era of the character I remember really disliking. I'm, like, there was, like... A couple of made-for-TV movies where he acted the same way. It's just... Looney Tunes show, it's very different from the old stuff. They made him, like, the straight man, the voice of reason. But at least that was something. And he, yeah. it's, like, it's in contrast to all these other lunatics on the show. Yeah. Including Mola. So it's, like... Um, yeah, that worked a lot better. Um, and from what I understand now, I haven't seen any of the new stuff they're doing, but it's like trying to emulate the old stuff a lot. So I'm sure Bugs is back to being a nut job if that's the case. But 
But yeah, I appreciate that a lot more than whatever this era for Bugs was because he was he was just a boring. He was like fucking yeah. Mickey Mouse. He was boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daffy, I like in this. Movie. I like the scene where like Brendan Fraser chases him around the Warner lot, and he he like yeah. runs into the back. He runs into like this uh, you know background painting, and then Brendan Fraser just tears through it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I will say, like, overall, I think this has better effects than Space Jam, uh, partially because Space Jam has a lot of CG, and also, like, it was ten years later, almost, yeah. like, the, the effects better be better. At the same time, it never looks like the humans are interacting with the Looney Tunes. No. Like, there's a scene where she's, like, trying to carry Daffy out of the room, and it's, like, super obvious she is not holding anything. Roger Rabbit was able to pull that off well, but it also had, like, one of the best animation directors who ever lived working on it. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, if you want to compare it to, like, something else, I guess that'd be the one. Um, and then, uh, should we let our peanut gallery give their perspective at all on this? I feel a little bad. They're just kind of st- sitting back there. I will say, like, Bugs did have some funny stuff in uh, back in action. Like, you remember the, the was it Warner Brothers twins? And he dressed up just like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was funny. Um, it's the, it's I like the... how loyal uh, Bugs is to Daffy. Like, I love their committed relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Daffy, like, kind of hates him in this movie. <laughs> It's a, yeah. Listen, it, you don't understand that their relationship is like, their marriage is much deeper than you could ever understand. Uh, Olivia? Yeah, sorry, the peanut gallery is not feeling so swift. Um, but oh. it seems to me that, uh, no, Bluetooth back in action has always been interesting. It just cause it feels like it's doing so much, you know? I will say it's but easier it, to explain Space Jam story. Yeah, it is. it's doing a lot. I, it's doing a lot. Let's see. But yeah, I agree. I think that it's interesting because normally Daffy's the clingy one when it comes to Bugs and Daffy, like in the Looney Tunes show and stuff. Mm-hmm. Where it feels like Bugs is more like doing, trying to do his own thing and Daffy's just kind of going for it. So it's interesting to see Daffy kind of take the front seat on that one. Yeah. Yeah, this definitely feels like Daffy's movie. Like, not, like not, I, I'd say even like intentionally. I don't think they meant for Bugs to be really bland at most of it, but I would say they definitely meant to focus on Daffy more than them. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that, what's his full name? S- something Sam, I always... Um, yeah, Somebody Sam. Yeah, Somebody Sam, yeah. He, like, he, he has like a really fun scene in this movie that goes I, on for a while. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the casino scene, I like the Elmer scene in the The art room. gallery. Yeah, oh, that was really creative, yeah. Um, this is the scene in Area 52 mm-hmm. where Joe Dante just Shoves in a bunch of references to old 50s B-movies. I kind of want to know how they animated the pointillism, like, art. I don't know why we keep looking over there. Clearly Mitzi's behind us. Right. Yeah. (laughs) I I just, I want to know how they animated it. It looks really cool. (laughs) Yeah, they did. No, like, they they really, like, weren't half-assed in any of that. Like, the animation looked really nice throughout the movie, and they kept, like, changing up what they were going to do. Like, it, they didn't just have a single idea, you know, like, they, they were willing to, like, like, yeah, that was a great example, like, different art styles for that scene. Mm-hmm. There's, like, a 3D alien in the movie that, like, looks rough, like, it doesn't blend in well, but it also was stylized, like, it looks, cur- like, they were trying to go for something cartoonish, so it's a little better than, like, anything in Space Jam has for starters, but, um, but yeah, visually, for the most part, they did a pretty good job of everything in this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's cinematography-wise, it's not, like, anything outstanding, but it works. Um, they, they take, well, okay, they take one crack at, uh, Space Jam, and then one just, like, reference to Space Jam. Um. They mentioned Michael this, Jordan, I remember. Yeah, there's, the, well, early in the film, like, the, like, the, the studio lady's like, oh, we're gonna put you in a movie with, like, a female love interest. And Bugs was like, well, usually I play the female love interest, which I think was a direct jab at Lola. And then later in the film... There's like the gag where like Steve Martin keeps on zipping himself, like because oh, yeah. it's it's Granny, and then it's like ah ha it's Steve Martin, and then oh no, it's it's Brendan Fraser's dad, and then he unzips again, and then it's Michael Jordan, yeah. and it's a it's a, it's a clip from Space Jam. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. That was a fun moment. 
than Tweety's dad somehow. <laughs> I'm not too big on Steve Martin in this. I think he can be really funny. I like Steve Martin, but I didn't really get much from him in this one. Yeah, no. I the the complaint I always hear with this movie, and I, I, I kind of agree, is like it puts way too much focus on the humans. And it's like, if you focus, if this were more of a Looney Tunes movie, because like, honestly, like, I forgot this whole, like, spy plot of this movie, Same. right? Like, I remember scenes and jokes from this movie. I do not remember the spy plot at all. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh... Yeah, I'll probably forget it, too. I'll probably forget it again. Like, it's... I don't think any of the human characters were, like, all that interesting, like... I love Brendan Fraser. He was like, you know, props to him. Whale's great. I love the mummy and all that stuff. But uh, he, and he had a personality in this. He wasn't like too bored or anything. But it was. Oh, just, like, I mean, he's a better actor than Michael Jordan. Right. He's way more invested in this than Jordan was. Yeah. Um. But I, you know, I, by the end of it, can I tell you anything about him? No. He's the son of James Bond. Yeah. Sure. Don't ask me how that happened. He's American. <laughs> Um, and the the love interest, I I, I can't even remember her name. Kate. Yeah. Kate. Oh, it's I Kate. Think it's Kate. Sure, I, um, I'll buy that. <laughs> Why not? Um, she was. I mean, she wasn't the worst either. They gave her a bit of a personality. She was like just kind of intentionally unlikable, but. Yeah. No, I mean she's like the the stiff upper lip. Uh, studio executive type that has to like learn to loosen up so she can be with Brendan Fraser. Yeah, but I don't know. I came here to see the Looney Tunes. Like, who cares? Yeah, and for what they give you, like, I felt like I really do feel like with Space Jam, most of it just felt like nods. Or this one, it has a couple of original ideas in there. I mean, it does do the nods too. Like, they have the whole rabbit season, duck season bit in there and stuff like that. But I feel like they did a pretty decent job coming up with material for the scenes involving the characters. Yeah. There's a few jokes that I'm like, okay, that's just, like, a joke from the old Looney Tunes you just did again. But, like, I mean, most of them were good jokes. Some of them were ill-timed, like the screwball joke I mentioned, but you know, there were were some funny ones. There were some good ones in there. Um, Um... I think it's funny that when they... They uh, run into... Jo- Has Joan Cusack been in anything we've watched? I feel like Joan... C- she was the mom in Mars Needs Moms. You're right. Okay, so, so hey, Joan uh, Cusack has returned, too. The comeback. Steve Martin hasn't been anything, has he? No, not that I not that I can think of. Yeah. I think this is his first time. Probably won't um, be his last. We'll see. Yeah, I could see him showing up again. <laughs> Brendan Fraser, too. Yeah. Um... Weird that J- Joan Cusack, she plays the mom in Mars Needs Moms, and this, her character's name is just Mother. Um, <laughs> but I liked when they go to Area 52 and Joan Cusack's giving them, like, all this, like, super spy equipment, and one of them is a phone with GPS. <laughs> Which, I mean, probably, maybe it was, like, a spy thing at the time, since, like, you know, the military gets stuff, like, five, ten years before the rest of us, so... That probably was accurate. You have all these, like, movies where they, like, they got over-ambitious with what the future was going to be, and they got under-ambitious. I guess this movie doesn't, like, take place in the future, to be fair, but it's, like, the high, yeah, the high-tech phone with a GPS on it, um, and then other movies, it's, like, then there's other movies, like, in 2010, we're going to have hoverboards, like, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's funny that Brendan Fraser also appears as himself in this movie because the, the the Brendan Fraser Brendan right. Fraser's character is a stunt double and he he insists that in the mummy he's on screen more than Brendan Fraser <laughs> and then at the end of the movie Brendan Fraser shows up and he, he like sucker punches himself <laughs> yeah it's funny um yeah I mean, there's, there's a line a, there's a deleted line I saw from a video once where they put, like, the way that they ended the uh, relationship that he has, like, Brendan Fraser and the one actress have, is, like, as they're talking about that, oh, like, hey, this is, uh, 
so and so we met the other day. We're thinking of getting married. Like they ended it on a joke. Like these two really don't have any chemistry at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's funny. That's like a bit like a bit of self awareness that like you know it's a, makes it a good it deepens spoof joke. You know, but yeah. I guess they cut it out because they didn't have the balls. Yeah, I mean, I l- listen. I I have a very deep love for Mr. Joe Dante. I I am willing to pin a lot of the issues in this movie on the studio mm-hmm. because he famously had a lot of issues with the studio making this film. Did he? he was fighting the studio constantly making this movie. Yeah, um, it doesn't surprise me, especially if they want it to be a fucking Space Jam sequel in the first place, like. <laughs> yeah, and he he like very very deliberately did not want to make Space Jam. He he joined this film to not make Space Jam. Uh, I wish he could have. I wish he could have taken out the other Space Jam too, but he just he kind of he didn't have the power. Uh, um, and this listen, like his best film is Gremlins too. That movie got made because Warner Brothers told like like they really wanted him to come back for a sequel, and he's like. I don't know, and they're like, we will let you do whatever you want. And he's like, okay, fine, I'll do it. And it's his best movie. Well, how can you not take that? How, yeah, like, that, that would make you, I think that can make anyone come back for any film. Like, because even if it's a franchise that they hate and they wish wasn't, like, their thing they were known for, they can make, like, a fuck you movie as a sequel at that point, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like, and I probably wouldn't even call Gremlins to a fuck you movie. I would just call it, like, very bizarre. Um, that definitely feels like a you were allowed to do whatever you want type of uh, production. Oh yeah. Um, what are, what are some other things that happen in this movie? The the ending kind of reminds me of uh, the ending of Sonic Adventure too. Just because they're on a big satellite racing down a big satellite. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, they have uh, Duck Dodgers at the end. Was, yeah, did anyone ever was Duck Dodgers popular? Was that like a, well, a short that was made into a show? Yeah, yeah, no, that was a show. It yeah, it was a. Sh- me... It was it, it was a short. It was one of like the old Looney Tunes shorts. It made me think about how much duck centric media I watched as a kid, like <laughs> Duck Dodgers, Duck Tales, Mighty Ducks, like so much duck, so much duck media <laughs> was shoved down my throat as a child. Duck Man. Darkwing Duck. Can't forget about that one. What type of Mickey Mouse organization calls themselves the Ducks? The Ducks. Um. I had something and I lost it. Oh, I, I was, uh, I don't even think the Duck Dodgers show had started when this came out. Maybe. If it, if it had started, it was, like, new when this I came wasn't, out. I wasn't too big on the Duck Dodgers show as a kid, but I'm I sure. I loved it. I'm Me sure too. people did. I haven't watched it in a long time. I couldn't say if it holds up or not. Right. I know they got Megadeth in an episode. They got who? Megadeth. Who the hell is that? The, 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 it's a metal band. Oh, okay. Like one of the big thrash metal bands. Nice. <laughs> um, oh. I'm, I'm trying to think if, if there's anything else for me to say about this. Like, in compare, I, I, you know, we'll, 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 we'll give our rankings which one we think deserves to win. I'll say, like, the most basic way of summarizing it for me is Space Jam is a more entertaining movie to me, but this is definitely more like of a faithful here's to the material sort of thing. So that thing is though, I don't know, like I, we'll talk about this, but I don't know if it's like close enough to what Looney Tunes was to beat Space Jam. Like, yeah, I appreciate that it's more like the original Looney Tunes, but it's also like I don't think it's like does 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 what it get gets right really trans like go up be up and beyond the weirdest fucking movie ever made or at least one of them <laughs> I, I don't know here's the thing I can like absolutely give space jam over this movie right space jam way more memorable it is right like there's so like so much about this movie I forgot honestly like when I picked the DVD up I'm like oh yeah Brendan Fraser's in this huh like, that, that had, like, slipped my mind. I forgot Brendan Fraser was even, like, the main human in this movie. Um, 
I think there's a reason that, like, Space Jam is the one everyone has, like, there's, like, this big cultural nostalgia for Space Jam. There's a reason Space Jam got a sequel 20 years later. Yeah, there's not going to be a back-in-action sequel. <laughs> Looney Tunes back in action again. I guess that's I, the best way I put it. I think that, like, I, I even think I prefer the animation in Space Jam. Like, it's really well done. It's just the blending is probably better and back in action, and they don't. I don't even. Do any horrifying it's the thing. I, I I think the blending might be better in Space Jam. Just like these these two films are almost like opposites in a way, uh-huh. right? Like the Looney Two in Space Jam, the Looney Tunes have a problem. They bring Michael Jordan to their world to fix the problem. In Back in Action, there's a human that has a problem, and so the Looney Tunes are running around in the human world trying to fix that problem. And I think it works a little better in this because it's just, we're putting Michael Jordan into the Looney Tunes. Like, everything is animated. Right. Trying to put the Looney Tunes in, like, a live-action setting, they kind of look like they're not there, you know? Right. I think that's part of why everyone's favorite sequence is, like, the scene in the Louvre, because it's, like... Like, it's all animated, yeah, right? I, yeah, you, it's kind of, yeah. I mean, I guess at the end, like, it, it real, I, as a kid, I always remembered the basketball court being live action. And, like, oh, like, they go back to the surface or something. But no, it, it does stay, like, animated, like, hand-drawn backgrounds the entire time. So that does make it blend in a lot better. Michael doesn't blend in well at all, but it's almost, like, funny how badly he blends into that movie. I I have heard that, like, while they were filming that scene there were there were like guys in green screen suits and some of them would like run in front of michael jordan and the 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 like guys who did the effects were like hey that's you can't do that like we need we need something to go there in front of michael jordan now yeah and so like this get hired as a green screen actor because it seems like <laughs> such a fun job to like, on a green wear, screen wear the green morph suit and like yeah, yeah. um so so apparently, like, the director of Space Jam, like, had no idea how the special effects were going to work. Um, <laughs> the CG is worse than this, absolutely. Yeah, the CG is fucking atrocious, but... But I... I Funny, though. The blending almost works better. I, I, I don't know if I could really say which one has better... Which, which one works with the characters better. You see that scene where um, they inflate Newman? Like, come on. That's, like, peak special effects work. That's horrifying. That, that was, shit is horrifying. I think that's probably the scariest one. Like, there's a lot of really unsettling images in that movie, and I think that's probably the worst one. They, like, really get close on his face as they're doing some of that, too. Like, yeah. And they, they, they have this really disgusting skin texture for the model, like... Now, the, them turning Michael Jordan into a basketball, that was also, like, horrifying. It's like, horrifying, but you don't get to focus on it because it's moving so quickly. You don't get to focus on it that long. Yeah. Um, it's still bad. It's still, even as it's moving fast, it looks bad. But, but like, like, they have to, you know, with Newman, they have to have, like, the whole inflating process, and then he's, and then they have to yeah. turn it into a fart joke, and then, and then he just, like, lands. Yeah, it's, that's, that was too much. <laughs> um. It looks like what you would see in, like, a fucking high school, like, animation class, like, project now. Yeah. At the time, I'm sure people couldn't do that, but with technology now, I bet, like, yeah, it just looks like a fucking animation project for school. Yeah. Uh. Jeez, are we at the part where we have, where we have to make a decision? I know what I'm picking, but I understand that this one's going to be a bit more debatable. I know what, I know how I feel, though. I, yeah, no, I'm, here's the thing, I, I think Back in Action is the better movie by pretty much every standard of the word better, except maybe in entertainment. That's really what I was thinking about going into this, is like, which of these is more entertaining? Because maybe it is better to just be like a way more memorable, crazy movie than it is to be just like kind of a bland, forgettable entry in the Looney Tunes canon. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm voting for back in action. I'm voting Space Jam. Okay, that's fair. I understand that. Like, I'm really on the fence with this one. I 
I under like here's the thing. I understand every argument someone can make for back in action, but just as a whole, like I, I, I genuinely enjoy one movie and would be willing to watch it again. The other one, it's like it's fine. I mean, that's the yeah, I watched back in action it, maybe twice as a kid, and once now I have seen Space Jam just like. Constantly. And another thing with like Space Jam is that, like I said it before, it's not like there's no, it's not like they're doing nothing right in that movie. And it's not like Back in Action is doing nothing wrong. I don't think that the quality of Back in Action is like high enough to where like the entertainment value like can't overcome it, you know? Yeah. If it, was, if it was like, like funny for the same reason Ben and Arthur was funny, I think I, you know, like I know it's a weird compare, just like some of the worst stuff that we've seen on this show. I don't think I would give it, but it's like quality wise, like in terms of how well they're made, um, and how many of the jokes land. Like back in action definitely has more jokes that land, but like I don't think it's like so high <laughs> that it's like, oh, it wins, you know? Uh-huh. And the same thing with like the animation quality is pretty consistent in both, and then the f- f- music is like significantly better in Space Jam. I don't remember a single song played in <laughs> Back in Action. I remember hearing one that I thought Thought sounded really out of place, actually. Like, I was getting fucking Jimmy Neutron flashbacks. Here, here's another uh, Hall of Victories guest who's been in a lot of episodes as a PNG. Bark, Gotta bark. Say your famous line. Bark, bark, bark. Bark insanely and loudly. All right, what do you guys think? Chris, which is better? Looney Tunes back in action or Space Jam? <sighs> Looney Tunes back in action. I'm sorry. Olivia? Conceptually, I'd say Back in Action sounds better, but Space Jam is definitely more, it sounds like more fun, so I guess I'm going to go with Space Jam on this one. Alright, Mitzi? Me? Oh, it's my turn. I'm going to (laughs) say, come back to me, let's do it. Stuart, look, you already know my answer, it's Thor on the wing, so... (laughs) Alright, well none of your votes really matter. We're going to vote for Thor on the wing. We're, 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 we're putting it down to uh, the the, back the audience vote. Back in action. The audi- it, This one was close. This might be one of the closest ones we've had. It was Space Jam with 55%. I win again. I very rarely lose. You, I think you've st- still only lost once <laughs> in these 25 episodes. You have that Jim Bush picture. With what did you say? Did Michael Jordan win? Yes! I'm wearing the Tar Heels shirt, by the way. <laughs> you have that Jeb Bush election thing, but on the top it's just Thor on the Wii. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you the picture later. We'll do Thor on Wii. It's Next true. episode, Thor on right. Wii versus Thor the movie. Well, look, look, I can do it because I actually have the VHS. Space Jam wins! Yay! I'm actually really excited for Space Jam. It's close for me. Yeah. All right. Um... So, next time on Hollow Victories, uh, incidentally, last time we were in person, we watched a film from a director I really like, Mr. Paul Verhoeven, despite him making Showgirls. Um, (laughs) As it happens, uh, two of his biggest movies, my two favorite of his movies, incidentally, both of them got remade right around the same time. Mm. So, next time on Hollow Victories, it's Robocop 2014. Versus Total Recall 2012. And as a bonus, we're doing Total Recall on Out of the Ring. We've we watched Robocop. Right? We have watched Robocop. I showed like you Robocop. Night, right? Yes, it was. Robocop was fun. I liked Robocop. Yeah, Total Recall. That's another one I haven't seen yet, so that'll be good. I'm uh, so excited to show it to you. I, I'm excited for this pair up. This is like, I like doing the. <laughs> really shitty corporate movies. Like, to see, like, where they went wrong. Like,. <laughs> It's fun. it's always fun to take a look at that, but uh, how how long is this going to be? Like one of the painful ones, or is this one of the funny ones? Uh, this is probably going to be a little painful. All right, I don't know how painful. I you know I made it through Southland Tales. <laughs> I, that's the thing. It's not going to be like as long as Southland Tales. Southland of Tales. World. It's so far from the worst, but it's just so long. Is the thing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like it's such a fucking long. It was like three hours long, wasn't it? We, no, we watched the extended cut. That's why we uh, did that to ourselves. <laughs> that's part. I mean, even the the original cuts almost three hours. I think. Yeah. 
Oh god. So yeah, next time it's it's the matchup of Verhoeven remakes from the early 2010s. All right. Um uh anything else to add, Michael, before we end this one? We were pretty quick. Yeah, we got some part of be. Pretty soon, so. part, part of that might just be in person. There's less like um and an urn and like well, stepping over each other. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I've been intimidated by this frog the whole time. Like, I want to I wanna get out of here. <laughs> um, I'm going to kill you, Mark. <laughs> anyone, else, anyone else have anything to, to end us off with? I hope you end this episode right. I, I'm not going to elaborate on what that is. I just hope you end it correctly. Okay, well... Until next time, from my co-host, Max Shadakal, I'm Matt Presents. See you in the next one. Peace.